Oh, I can tell you it was really an emotional interview. This family uh, had tears flowing from their faces as they recalled the moments that the suspect, that they say that suspect, which is the child's father, FaceTimed them, even forcing the mother to watch uh, him injure her child. Her face was just covered in blood. He hit her with something really hard. And then he, he called me on FaceTime, and he showed me that she, he choked her on FaceTime as I was on there. And he told me, I said, Trey, that is your daughter. That is your daughter. Stop. That is your daughter. She loves you. I care about her. You care about her. Like, that is your daughter. And he told me his exact words was, you only love that man, so you did this to her. Kirsten Watson tells Fox 26 she's still numb and in shock. Around 10 o'clock Monday morning, her child's father, identified by police as 25-year-old DeAndre Flanagan, stormed into her job at Walmart in North Harris County. He had their two-year-old daughter, Zavea Marie, who had just been dropped off at daycare in his arms, and he began screaming at Watson. He just wanted my phone. He's screaming at me, cursing me out, telling me, what's the passcode? Tell me the passcode or she's gonna get it like and I'm telling him the passcode and I'm telling him it over and over and over but at the end of the day I guess it just wasn't enough. After he took off with Zavea in hand, police say Flanagan took deputies on a 30 mile chase. The car eventually came to a stop on Stubner Airline Drive near Veterans Memorial where officers took Flanagan into custody uninjured. But little Zavea required CPR until life flight arrived. She died at the hospital. She was just such a happy baby and I just know she's at peace. Watson says in the week leading up to this incident, she had to contact police on three different occasions about Flanagan, but she was told there was nothing they could do. The first day he took he took my child like I was giving her a bath in the tub. He stormed in and he took her like out the tub. She wasn't even dressed and he just took her out the house and drove away in a car. We've been gone our separate ways. And I let him be, but he just, he couldn't let me be. He couldn't let me be happy. He couldn't let me move on with my life. This family now sharing their story, hoping it helps someone else. And I wonder about how many others of Vegas is around the world right now, around the United States right now, that's having the same problem. This in the city, this in the state. We got to help one another. Ooh, this story right here. I have a lot of questions. Hey everyone, it's your sister Roland, and all I need is a few minutes to talk about this case coming out of Harris County, Texas, that happened on Tuesday, which was March 21st of 2023, where you have this young man who is on my left by the name of DeAndre Flanagan, who um, allegedly, you know, we have to say that, allegedly took the life of his little girl. She's on my right, and her name is Zavea Flanagan. I have so much questions this story and whenever it comes to little kids the only person who I feel compassion for I feel sorry for because they were truly innocent in this ordeal is the child or the children that end up being the casualty most of the time in these situations everybody else you get in the side eye for me until it's cleared up yeah, I'm going to give it a side eye. Because in this story, I heard there was an order of protection. Okay, there was order of protection. Was the order of protection given to the daycare? And if it was, why did the daycare not call this young lady? Hey, he just came and picked up the, um, your daughter. I know you just dropped her off. Um, He just picked her up. And then for something like that, not to, you know, alarms to go off, the mom recently dropped her off, whether it was an hour or two hours, but she just got dropped off. She probably never picks her up at 10 o'clock. Nothing, nothing rang a bell to anybody over there. And then, okay, so if she had auto protection, she provided them with the auto protection. Why did they not call the mother to give her heads up? You know, because he, he left the daycare and went straight to the mother's home. I mean, to the mother's work, excuse me. So that does it, didn't make sense um, to me. And then another thing. I don't know if it's just this generation. But this young lady said, I think that's her only child for now. Because she didn't talk about another child. 
she said she was, you know, she, this little girl was always with her. That, of course, that's your only child. She, they sleep together. If I had, if the news had not interviewed her, I would not know that she had lost a child. It's okay not to talk to the news. You just lost a child. You don't have to go run and talk to the news. Why do people have to go run and talk to the news after something? This is something traumatic. Are we so desensitized in this uh, um, in this day and age now? I know people, well, the people that I know that in my age group are a little older, that lost kid children to drownings, car accidents, and where somebody took them out with a gun. Some of them had t took months, took years before they were able to talk. Because it was it was so painful, it was so hurtful, and the fact that I outlive my child, I have to bury my child, I have to walk behind a casket, I have to sit in a church or sit in a chapel, funeral chapel, sit and see my daughter, see my son in a casket. How you talk, how you? I don't understand this. How are you able to talk to the to the news? You can say, oh, because she's strong. strong. For something traumatic like that? Come on, man. Come on, man. This, don't, this doesn't make sense to me. It's okay to take some time to have somebody speak on your behalf. You don't have to go, why are you running to go talk to the news already? After you, what this man made you watch your child. Even if you didn't watch the finish after that, you saw him doing that to your daughter. Oh my God, I don't understand this stuff. I really don't understand these things. And then this young man, for you to, you to let whatever situation you have going on with this young lady where she have a new boyfriend, she was flaunting in your face or whatever, for you to get so angry and let that evil overtake you to do this to this little baby that couldn't even do anything to you. Where the Bible says anybody who does wrong to uh, this one of these little kids, you should you, you should just take something, put it around your uh, um the the thought. Even if the thought came in your mind, take something, put it around your neck, and throw yourself in the sea before you even touch and do something to this um little girl. You did this to your child. She came out of you. She's a part of you, and you did this to your child. Oh my God. This, these stories is it doesn't make sense and you think you're going to have peace and I wouldn't be surprised if his lawyers try to play insanity yeah you will never know peace ever 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 know peace this doesn't make any sense so she left you and then you decided to take out your child that means you never he most likely never even had a bond with this child because the the mom was like, oh, you care for her, I care for her. No, he didn't because if he did, he wouldn't have did something like this. And another thing that bothered me, was well, maybe she said that the mother is saying, is saying this to herself so she could, you know, sleep at night so she could be at peace. Say she knows her daughter is at peace. How is your daughter at peace when, when before she closed her eyes? on this earth she saw and then she's at the age where she know that man that deandre was her father you were her mother she see this man hurting her she see this man doing bad stuff to her she don't understand what was happening and then she don't even know where you are at um, thing how this how is she at peace that's that's not a peaceful that's not a peaceful death I know we try to tell ourselves this so we can, we can cope, but that's not a peaceful death. That's a, that, that is an agonizing, tragic, traumatic way to leave this earth, especially as a little baby that didn't, didn't even have a chance. You guys are older. You, you, went to, um, you had your childhood. You went through elementary, middle school, high school. You live a good much of your life. This little baby didn't have a chance didn't even have a chance didn't even have a chance at all and now she's gone i don't feel sorry for no adult 
the only person who I cry out, who I, who I could uh, uh, mourn, is these little kids that never had a chance. Because sometimes they, somebody don't care. People just don't care. That's what we, that's what we, people don't care. People don't parent how they used to parent. And then these people that I knew, these people had several children. That, that was not their only children. That was some of them. Uh, that was their only boy. Some of them they had. That was their. Uh, uh, um, they had several boys. They had several girls, and then they still. It was so painful. They were unable to speak about it. But nowadays, not everybody, but a lot of people. Something this traumatic happened to them. Oof, they go run and talk to the news. It doesn't make sense. It may make sense to you, Zafet Gado. It'll never make sense to me. For me to lose, the fact that you lose a child, whether you lose a child, you know, the child was sick, the fact that you have to bury your child. You should never outlive your child. That's not how it was supposed to be. That's not how it was designed to be. But this is the world that we live in. Anyway, that's all I had to say in the situation. Thank you for watching and I'll see you in another video. Bye.